morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world watching this. We've had some special uh, meetings with our missionaries around the world. And you can see online, we have posted the Yeramchuks from Ukraine. We have uh, Michael Miller from Honduras and Jamal from uh, overseas in the Middle East. And today, very special guests, all the way from Porto Portugal. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the Perez family. Here they are. All the, how are you doing? Good. Hi. Doing great. We have uh, Luciano, which is the papa. Hi, Luciano. Luciane, Hello. mama. We have Pedro down there. Hi, Pedro. And the beautiful Mila. How are you doing, Mila? Hi. <laughs> Don't be shy. Don't be shy. We want to get things going. So anyway, it's great to see you guys. It's kind of a an interesting time in our world right now, isn't it? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, even out here, I mean, I, I, we have the beautiful ocean. It's beautiful, but we're locked into the house. So we we have to pick up meals and go to the store and wear our big mask, face masks. And they're starting to open things up in California and some of the states, but uh, still have some regulations. So, and then there's a great fear that there's going to be another round of this, which I hope doesn't happen. But, but first of all, I'd like to hear from you guys, and you can tag team and share whoever wants to share. How, how are things going for you? How unusual is it right now doing ministry and how are you going about doing your ministry? Yeah, well, actually we've been very busy with a lot of Zoom meetings and that's I think how everyone is dealing with this situation of being isolated. Um, so we have done some colloquium activities through Zoom. Colloquium, tell been, people what colloquium is. Colloquium is- Oh, okay. Preaching, Luciano has been preaching. We have meeting with people for discipleship, counseling, coaching. Um, so it is a blessing that we have um, this kind of possibility, but we really miss people and miss to, you know, be around them, having them over and uh, gather in, in worship. Um, so, yeah. Mila, yeah. while you're on the screen, what, uh, how, what, how has it been for you as a student and a young person? What's it been like <laughs> being locked down? Well, my school began, like all my schooling, like the week after everything closed. So they were really quick to respond. I'm currently studying for finals that were canceled by Cambridge, but my school still wants to keep going oh, with them. They should have just blown them off altogether. That would have been <laughs> Yeah. Um, I have to say I have a I have been a bit um, angry, mad, yeah. stressed <laughs> at it, but it, I've just been like studying online. I have sit, six periods every day, an hour each. So I study for six hours and then I have tests and homework, which I have to study after wow. lessons. So wow. that's around like four, four hours or three so it's like a day. You're not, you're not really getting a break at all. You're just having to work hard at home. Um, no. No. We had Easter break, um, which was like a week before Easter and then Easter and then a week after. Yeah. So we had two weeks. And then during that time, I was free. So I did like, I watched movies, I read books, I did my stuff. I didn't have to study. But now things are crazy. Are they, uh, are they saying anything about when uh, regular school will start back up next year? Or what do you think? um school will start in september they haven't said anything differently about when will school start but the government has decided that school will not come back because our our school ends in june not in may so we're not going to come back this year um only um juniors and seniors are going to do their tests because they have national tests that they have to do to like get into college so they're going to go to school, public schools are opening only for them. And they're, have, they're having all of the schedules and stuff. But I'm still a sophomore, so I, okay. I'm not going to go back to school. Well, thankfully, you're a sophomore. I felt so sad this year for all the seniors graduating who didn't get to have prom or graduation. And that's been kind of sad. OK, Pedro, I want to talk to you for a minute, my brother. You're a little bit younger. How are things going for you with schooling and all that kind of stuff? Uh, school is going fine. I'm not as stressed as my sister because I don't have any final exams or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's well, that's good. Okay. I love your braces, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was so used to seeing these guys as so little. 
And that you're so big. I wish I could have been there. We had a trip planned, as you guys know. I'm just telling the folks listening. We had a trip planned right now to, to be in Portugal, but uh, obviously due to the COVID stuff, we couldn't go. We're hoping to reschedule maybe this year before Uncle Randy uh, retires. But even after that, I'm not retiring from ministry. Yes. You know, in the Bible, if you retire from ministry, that means you die. So I don't want to die. <laughs> Luciano, right. how are you doing, my brother? Well, doing okay. Coping with this quarantine. I was like Noah. I just went out of home after 40 days locked in. Yeah. So took a deep breath, went out, walked, came back, and I'm alive. Good. So, yeah, doing okay. You had a nice beard going. I had a full beard about a week ago, but I decided Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just start over again. <laughs> yeah, we, we saw that. We started on uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In yeah. The well, one of, the, one of the reasons I decided to shave is, you know, just covered my handsomeness, and I didn't want to do too much of that. <laughs> so I still have to cover mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't be so, like you, my brother. So as far as ministry, though, are you doing uh, like, a, uh, I think, Luciania was saying, like a colloquium, but online, you're doing some of that? Yeah, that's right. We were about to enter, if I may call it, like phase two for colloquium here. We arrived in Porto about, um, well, in August um, 1918. No, 2018. 1918? <laughs> wow, you've been working a long time, brother. <laughs> no, no, 2018. Yeah. And, you know, this first year and a half, we took, like, you know, the time to get to know the culture a little better, you know, build bridges with, you know, people here, uh, establish connections so that you can reach out to college students, which colloquium is focused mostly. And we had everything like triggered already to start. Uh, we had like released the schedule for all the events for the month of March and April when the news came that we had to close. Yeah. So, um, after that, we thought, well, maybe nothing's going to happen. We're going to have, we're going to be at home and not doing ministry. But I believe every missionary around the world, every pastor, everybody else is working through something like this Zoom. Yeah. So we've been talking to people. I had the opportunity to lecture, I think, four times or five times already to oh, university wow. students and uh, couples as well. You know, talking about uh, hot shoes. One of them was. Uh, where is God in this COVID situation? Like yeah. answering the question, why is that? Why there is suffering if you have like a good God yeah. in our lives? So, and Lucena and I have been doing mentoring too, uh, in, online, talking to our disciples, if we call them them this way. Yeah. You know, in some ways, I think it it almost uh, it almost opens up some new avenues to reach people that some, some of them may not be reached normally. Because uh, right. I'm not going to walk into a church, but they'll say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a personal one-on-one -on -one video mm -hmm. or with a group kind of anonymously. So I've seen, at least in, in our ministry and some others I've talked to, that even with this COVID and all the stuff going on, that it, God, wow. Remember, didn't he say somewhere that we, we'd we be able to reach more people than even he did? It says in the Bible, you'll reach mm -hmm. more people. And I think the technology, he knew what was coming. Uh, yeah. Jesus knew knew about Zoom before we did. And so it's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> And you know what? Uh, it took the Roman army to spread out the disciples, you know, out yeah. of Jerusalem. Now it took the COVID for us to reach out through all their means. Yeah. So anyway. So uh, let me ask you, what are some of the challenges you're finding? I mean, you have the opportunity with Zoom, but what do you miss the most about ministry? I, I'm, I'm going to say obviously the person to person, but do you have hope that, hey, this is going to pass soon and we're going to really have a reunion? And Well... Do you want to say anything about yes. that too? Um, well, um, I miss people and I miss our nature walks. I miss um, church. Uh, we have been trying to establish a meaningful routine rhythm at home with good books, music, and lots of baby cooking. Um, but I think we are ready for, to go back to our lives. But here in Portugal, what we've been listening is that we're going to have waves of isolation. Yeah. That's what we hear. So here. we don't know how things will, yeah, how things will um, go from now on. So Mila, let me ask you, do you, um, you kind of wish you were isolated with Uncle Randy who could make you uh, cookies and pancakes every morning? 
<laughs> good, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really gonna miss that. If you actually retire and don't visit, visit us, I'm gonna be like, oh, I'll visit. It. Like I say, I'm retiring <laughs> from. I'm retiring just so we can be near our family here in California more often. But we still will stay in St. Louis as well, and we'll have. I mean, ministry will go on. Uh, like I say in the Bible, retirement is. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you want to retire early, some people get eaten by a whale. So you have to make sure you do whatever God wants you to do. Right. Right. Let me ask you, uh, as we kind of wrap things up, um, what are two or three top things that we can be praying for you guys about? Yes. Uh, first, Randy, I think that God will give us a, will, will give us wisdom and insights into the culture of how to ministry to people after this pandemic is over. You know, with all the business going down, not all, but many business going down and yeah. people in their jobs, lots of people have lost good friends and close relatives. So mm. the question is, should we continue doing exactly the same thing in the same way? Should we change our approach? No, we need some insight into it. Yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've thought a lot about, it, even at Central, when we return to the corporate, how's that gonna change? People, we're certainly not gonna be hugging and shaking hands as much, at least initially. We're not gonna mm -hmm. be passing communion or offering, we'll have to take it a different way. So we have to start thinking about, even when we come back together, especially people that are, that are more at risk, older people and people with uh, pre-existing conditions. We're yeah. just going to have to start doing church different, even when we do get back together. And I do yeah. think, we, I think if you don't agree with me or not, but I think we're going to appreciate being together much more and loving one another a, a lot mm -hmm. more than maybe we have uh, in the past, just because we, we've missed it so much, you know? Yep. Yeah, we took that for granted. So we'll be praying that, uh, that you, you will be able to adjust. How about for the family things, some things we can pray for about the family? Well, obviously, schooling, that the kids get the schooling stuff they need done. And yeah. Pedro can go she right to school, but he doesn't have any work to do. But Mila has to do a lot of work. So, Well, do you have anything to say, Nana? Um, well, pray for discernment as we go back like in California, and I think in many parts of the world, things are going back. Yeah. Uh, Lucian is diabetic, so we need to be careful right. and be discerning in how we can go back to um, our normal life. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, before we close, let me, uh, let me just pray for all of you, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll close, and I'll let you choose your favorite song to put at the end of the video. Everybody has their favorite song, so I'll let you choose that. But let's pray real quick. Father God, Thank you so much for the Perez family and the work that they're doing in Portugal. Uh, we know this is a, a, a different kind of time. I was going to say difficult, but it's different. And we have to minister in different ways. So I pray that you would just guide and direct us to lead us to minister to folks the best that we can through uh, non-socializing person to person. But uh, we thank you for the, the kids and the schooling that they're finishing up and that they would be able to return to school uh, next semester when things open back up. Uh, give them a good downtime to really uh, to study online and to reflect about some of the things you're doing in their lives. Um, thank you for uh, Luciene and uh, Luciano and their opportunities to counsel with people and to maybe really meet some deeper needs that they couldn't do otherwise. Uh, we pray for the colloquium group that as they meet online and as the church meets online, that you would continue to bless and minister to people's hearts because the Spirit of God is not uh, distanced or isolated from us. The Spirit of God is here with us. So we pray that you would fill us with your spirit, use us in mighty ways, bless this family so that they can continue to be a blessing to those they minister to. We thank you and praise you for them, for their work in Portugal, and we give you all the praise and glory for the results that we know will come. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, kids, uh, what's your uh, favorite song that you'd like to have at the end of your video? You choose, Mila. You and Pedro. What do you think? Yeah. Um, Mila, you choose. <laughs> whoa, the pressure is on. Um, the pressure is on. I like Heart for the Nation. Oh, Heart for the Nation? Heart for the Nation. Oh, okay. We can do that. I like that song. Give us a Heart for the Nations. All right, we'll do that. Well, thank you. <laughs> really? Thank, thank you guys for your time. And um, the girls, there you are. You're kind of freezing up on that camera for some reason, but at least we can see your pretty faces, so. Thank you for your time, and uh, we'll be praying for you guys, and we hope, God willing, maybe at the end of the year, or early next year, we can uh, come back and have a mission weekend and have some fellowship and fun with you guys. That'd be fun. Thanks for, thanks for stopping in for a while. You'll, uh, 
probably go online in the next day or two. I'll let you know, but uh, folks are going to enjoy seeing you, I know. So God bless, and we'll talk Thank to you again you. soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. your heart for the nations let us be light to the world use us to declare your salvation to the people of the earth may we be moved by compassion let us know your love for the lost Lord use us to lead them to the cross. Father, here we are, standing in your presence. Send us forth to lead them to the cross. Spirit, here we are, fill with your power send us forth to lead them to the cross give us your heart for the nations let us be light to the world use us to declare your salvation to the people of the May we be moved by compassion. Let us know your love for the Lord.